Hi there students. This video record is about uh, uh, say rivets, which is uh, a fastener, which is a standard machine element. Okay, follow the slides of my presentation and uh, doing this make the presentation as uh, audio visual. Yes. The cover page of my presentation. Okay, where it is? Yes. Well, uh, the name of the machine element, which is a fastener, is rivet. Yes. Rivet as to make it uh, the word as plural. In English we say rivet, in Turkish perçin. Ler to make it plural. Uh, on the wallpaper uh, there is a photograph. In the photograph you can see uh, the common use rivets, especially this one. Now uh, I am encircling it. Uh, is a very widely used one in machine uh, design and connecting the components to each other. And uh, this one, or well, it is in the same type this or that. These are in the same type. Uh, ah, well, one more uh, here and this one. These are all in the same type. Uh, I used uh, whenever uh, one side of the assembly is closed to place a dolly. Well, this sentence right now is not so understandable, but I'm going to make it clear giving an example. Which time, uh, not the others, but this type of rivet is to be used. Okay. Rivets are made of uh, metal. Okay, uh, it is made of soft metal, soft steel, might steel for instance, or well, uh, made of copper, made of aluminum, uh, depending on the material of the components, these are to be connected to each other. To be able to prevent uh, having galvanic uh, effects, well, whatever the material of the component is, well, use the rivet made of the same material to connect those. Okay. Rivet, uh, yes, it is a fastener. It's a standard fastener. It gives us a permanent joint, not removable. Permanent joint. Well, to be able to disassemble the components, demontage the components, well, uh, need to damage the joint by cutting the head of a rivet because it is a permanent joint not removable okay yeah as it is written here a rivet is a ductile metal pin that is inserted through holes in two or more parts yes the holes well are created first uh, as the ones in alignment coaxial and then through the common hole uh, a special machine element it is called rivet is inserted and then well to be able to connect the components to each other plastically deform the stem of the rivet okay by hammering or using press machine while plastically deforming the free end of the rivet we have the necessary holding forces we have the gripping forces i have some slides to demonstrate uh, well uh, how a riveted joint is created okay in this photograph uh, well um, there are some uh, joints okay where uh, the facility is a pin or pins well, this photograph uh, is to see 
uh, the one of the joints of uh, a truss bridge I see that this is uh, a bridge railroad bridge and this is well at one of the joints the uh, connection well this structural member this member this member connected to each other indirectly via using gusset plate okay the gusset plate uh, and the uh, component have been connected to each other using here these dots in the photograph just the rivets okay using rivets how many rivets are necessary to have the connection okay one rivet two rivets and rivets how much okay it is the question and uh, that is answered by mechanical engineers writing the design equation saying that shear stress at the cross section of the rivet is to be less than maximum equal to the allowable shear stress then determine the number of rivets okay this photograph we have uh, partially shown a uh, disc of a uh, clutch well here uh, it is completely in the photograph uh, this disc at this side of the disc we have a special cover made of asbestos okay and this layer has been connected to the disc metallic part of the disc using rivet rivets joints well I am highlighting them painting the heads of the rivets uh, yes these are the rivets okay and in this photograph there is a rivet over here there is a rivet here rivet here rivet here okay well the uh, layer and the rest of the clutch uh, have been connected to each other using the rivets okay this photograph uh, well uh, an airplane is partially in uh, the screen well sheet metal one sheet metal two these two sheet metals uh, ha have been connected to each other using rivets yes these dots repeated dots in the photograph are all rivets well uh, instead of connecting the sheet metals to each other applying welding process having welded joints well uh, riveting is more common when whenever the thickness of the sheet metal is less than one millimeter well very thin sheet metal if welding process is applied then well the thermal energy it is uh, to be used for melting the material may not be controlled at the level so the thin sheet metal even may uh, completely damaged uh, in the vicinity of it is age it may completely melt or burn okay so well uh, avoid using welded joints in case sheet metal is very thin use rivets uh, well this photograph can see another uh, very common uh, application there is a teapot the body of the teapot and the handle uh, have been connected to each other here and there using rivets there is a belt here in this photograph and this hose to make the hose uh, strong more strong you see have been encircled with metallic rings these are another type of rivets okay these are rivets okay I said that uh, on the cover page this is the most commonly used uh, type uh, at the riveted joints okay while this photograph we see it is undeformed appearance and then yes here it is schematically shown I drafted this figure without using a ruler how many years ago on a transparency say that this is the head of the rivet it is in spherical shape okay round head rivet and that's it is stem okay it is a cylinder in shape 
well go to market and purchase a reward this type of reward it is going to be in this appearance undeformed reward and then how about uh, the thing to do after having such a reward first position sheet metal one sheet metal two with respect to each other and then applying the same drilling process okay create the necessary holes within this one within the other as coaxial in alignment and then as it is illustrated in the following figure insert the rivet through the hole to be able to uh, create the necessary holding forces well after inserting the rivet we plastically deform it as free end using a hammer or a press so to be able to have the uh, at the other side the necessary head to grip the to hold the pieces the components well the length of this further extended part of the stem is uh, important to its value not arbitrary in length well the following slide it is illustrated to be able to plastically deform the uh, extended part of the rivet well we use either hammer or a press well if the size of the rivet is small enough as it is, as it is illustrated uh, in this figure take a hammer and by hammering the free end of the rivet via which applying such a deformation force plastically deform it okay if you use a special hammer it is uh, at its tip uh, have the negative of the shape it is the geometry to set to the uh, to the uh, at the free end of the uh, further extended end of the rivet okay by hammering or if the magnitude of the force is greater than the thresholding value otherwise uh, say uh, it would be applied by using a hammer uh, muscular uh, effect then uh, find the press machine and then applying the force using the uh, say the uh, press rem of the press uh, apply the necessary deformation force and plastically deform the free end okay just plastically deforming the free end this further extended end and setting such a shape uh, having such a shoulder at the other side a hat okay well we can have the holding forces one force is applied by this uh, hat the other force applied by the other hat okay since we plastically deform by squashing it well have such holding forces gripping forces okay rivet plastic deformed rivet to its hats can apply the necessary holding forces this and that gripping forces that is the issue that is the story well uh, this slide is uh, for the interest of engineers or say the technicians well uh, the length of the further extended part of the stem before the deformation stage i mean this part the length of this part how much how many millimeters here is the answer with the if statement here d is uh, parametrically shown value is the uh, undeformed diameter of the rivet well the diameter of the stem of the rivet d well uh, d is recommended uh, as equal to uh, 1.8 times s s is the sheet metal thickness okay well since a hole it is necessary to create okay within the sheet metal uh, mathematically speaking means a discontinuity uh, it comes to uh, weakness okay to be able to keep the 
discontinuity at minimum level yes obey to this recommendation the whole diameter should be small enough so well accordingly select the diameter of the rivet yes there is a uh, expression here it comes from practice recommended value well if the rivet diameter is D and then well the diameter of the drill the hole it is needed to insert the stem of the rivet is equal to rivet diameter plus one millimeter if the rivet diameter is greater than 10 if the rivet diameter of the rivet is less than 10 millimeters then the increment to have the to add the increment value to add onto the diameter of the rivet to find the diameter of the hole this sub one is the diameter of the drill is equal to rivet diameter plus 0.2 maximum 0.5 millimeters okay so rivet diameter and the drill diameter are dependent to each other and the rivet diameter Yes, it is recommended as equal to how much? Sheet thickness, thickness of the sheet, yes, times 1.8. Okay. So, well, after selecting the pin diameter, obeying to these recommendations, then yes, check whether the, when the rivet is inserted through the hole, it is undeformed end, will have at it is undeformed end whether gonna have such a further extension the length of the extended part should be in the order of 1.5 times d but if it is true if the rivet diameter is less than 20 and the type of the rivet is button head type rivet yes the coefficient is 1.5 but if the diameter of the rivet uh, for button head type is greater than 20, then this coefficient, okay, to use for finding the length of the uh, extended part of the stem is 1.7. Okay, if the uh, say the rivet is not button head rivet but uh, round top contour sunk head rivet okay it is another commonly used rivet type then the coefficient to find the length of the extended part at the other side of the uh, joint is not 1.5 but 1.2 okay for uh, contour sunk head type rivets the coefficient minimum 0.5 maximum 0.7 yes these are recommended values uh, to obey well uh, on the wallpaper I said that well this type of rivet or the same type here this or that whenever it is impossible to uh, place a dolly at the other side see this illustration well at one side of the uh, assembly we have a support okay there should be a support okay to house the uh, available head of the rivet well uh, thanks to the existence of this support via using a hammer or press uh, say rem of the press can create such a deformation force can apply such a deformation force if there were no such a support which is called uh, for uh, riveting purpose dolly in the jargon if there were no dolly then although we are using a hammer or press then the magnitude of the force uh, it would be created it would be applied would be zero okay such a support is needed to be able to apply such a force by hammering or by pressing yes well if both of the sides of the joint open to the uh, ambient can easily place dolly and from the other side apply the process hammering process or uh, deformation process hammering by hammering or by pressing 
but if one side is open to atmosphere ambient but the other side closed see this photograph I shot this photo uh, well at the place training place uh, near to sports center Norton Cypress campus well there is a cap orange color it is to close this uh, part of the um, weldment and this end and the opposite end similarly we have closing caps while the caps you see carefully there is a dot over here it is a rivet there is a dot rivet this is a rivet okay imagine how uh, the rivet is deformed where is the dolly well before closing this cap assembling it if you place your dolly within this uh, tube then after the riveting stage after closing this opening then you cannot take the rivet away impossible because you close the opening what can you do such a case if one side of the joint is closed cannot access to place dolly and after the deformation stage remove it then use this type of rivets well the rivet is over here this part is just a pulling rod okay uh, to be able to deform the rivet okay it is a special one it is used in such a case one side of the joint is closed not open to atmosphere okay this special tool special pliers okay using this plier well see it is illustrated in this figure okay mandrel first uh, insert the rivet of course together with this pulling rod through the hole and then using this special tool mandrel okay apply the pulling force pull the rod okay the rod while uh, pulling the rod it is other end well over here and a uh, way which apply the necessary deformation force and plastically deform this extended part of the rivet and if we continue to pull the rod pulling rod then at the cross section since there is a necking over here the cross section is uh, smaller than the cross section of the rest well at this cross section there is a weakness and intermolecular forces reach to the limit and it is exited so the normal stress at the cross section uh, becomes greater than the uh, mechanical limit and at the cross section the pulling rod is damaged is split is broken and then take the main part of the pulling rod but till that time the created force uh, will be sufficiently large to uh, plastically deform this free end okay only this part of the pulling rod left over there is surrounded by the plastic deformed portion of the rivet so well although at the other side there is no dolly using the special rivet applying the necessary deformation force uh, thanks to the existence of this pulling rod can achieve the deformation stage and have the gripping forces okay this slide can see the uh, the names of the uh, say rivets uh, we name the rivets uh, considering the uh, shape uh, of the heads uh, if the head of rivet is in this form spherical in shape then it is called button head rivet yes i said that it is the commonly used one most commonly used one this is a button head button head rivet okay the shape and size of the head uh, are standard 
and the parameter is the rivet diameter undeformed diameter of the stem of the rivet d is the main parameter and well see the standard values the diameter of the head it's a sphere okay one and three quarter of d and the height of the head is equal to uh, well three quarter of the uh, diameter of the stem those parameters those values are to be interested in by the manufacturer rivet manufacturer but for the user well not necessary to learn or to know this uh, standard coefficients standard values go to market and then well mention uh, the nominal size of the rivet and it is type for instance say that cone head rivet diameter is 10 the nominal value of rivet is it is stem diameter diameter of the stem undeformed diameter of the stem okay mention the type of the rivet type of the rivet or name of the rivet comes from the uh, the uh, type of the head button head rivet say that cone head rivet pen head rivet uh, counter sunk head rivet okay well mention the type of the rivet and it is nominal size which is the diameter of the stem that is enough shopkeeper will find the rivet on the shelf and then present it saying that yes sir here it is okay uh, at the parts list along the notes column uh, on assembly drawings assembly drawing sheets yes the standard designation note for the rivet or rivets are to be expressed are written actually in inventor if uh, use inventor for creating assembly drawing uh, with the necessary parts list then inventor will fill in the uh, blank along the notes column technical notes column for the rivet automatically okay well uh, part of my presentation there are some examples uh, well um, what is the technical note to express to write to mention at the parts list for standard uh, rivets yes answer this question in few minutes uh, well this slide okay uh, lap joint boot joint which one is recommended before answering the question then say that sheet metal 2 sheet metal 1 these two components are to be connected to each other not applying welding process not by using bolt nut pair but rivets okay you see sheet metal one has been overlapped onto the sheet metal two it is a lap joint no avoid using this connection it is a poor practice why because uh, for instance say that um, this sheet is under the action of such a load and other sheet is under the action of that force and uh, since there is an overlapping these are not at boot positioning they are on top of each other the line of action of this force and the that of the other there will be a distance so if this joint is not in accelerated displacement or decelerated this dynamic motion it is moving with a constant speed or it is stationary then this force and the other force will be equal to each other since there is a distance between them this means it is it is a couple under the action of the couple yes this joint will uh, tend to rotate will be bended uh, here and there will be undesirable bending stresses okay combined stress 
So such a combined stress, such a bending effect causes to weakness. This is because of that reason a poor application, poor practice. The correct one is uh, say boot joint, sheet metal two, component one, and what is that? Gusset plate, gusset plate. Yes, these are not overlapped. S1 and S2, these are sheet metals you see are at the same level boot positioning and at both of the sides of the joint use gusset plate symmetrically this and that gusset plate one gusset plate two this is the good practice if you use gusset plates then well there will be no bending moment bending effect because the force exerted onto the sheet in this direction and the force exerted onto the by the other sheet okay uh, will be in alignment uh, there will be no net rotational effect your so uh, good practice is that one use gusset plates well I'm going to answer the question uh, for uh, such a joint how many rivets are needed to connect sheet 1 to sheet 2 both of the sheets. It is an engineering question. A question to answer by uh, mechanical engineers. Well here n is the number of rivets and at the beginning it is unknown. Ah, hole diameter, rivet diameter is not unknown because you know the recommendation to be able to prevent having weakness within the sheet metals well obey to this recommendation and uh, depending on the sheet metal thickness of the sheet metal determine the diameter of the rivet and then the diameter of the hole okay so we know the rivet diameter uh, it depends on the sheet metal thickness okay well under the action of such a loading well take this rivet for instance one of the rivet and then draw it is diagram pictorially show uh, the part of the rivet okay well this sheet sheet one uh, tweet his body exerting a force okay to the stem this is the applied force by the sheet okay say so that F load this force is balanced by the atomic bonding forces. How many cross sections we have since we have this side gusset plate at the other side gusset plate two cross sections. These are under the effect of shearing. Well this cross section okay uh, is under shearing and the atomic bonding forces lots of tangentially directed forces over this surface at the cross section we have such a surface okay just uh, oppositely directed resultant of the atomic bonding forces say that f sub i intermolecular bonding forces uh, at the other side we have one more cross, uh, cross section okay that cross section atomic bonding forces similarly resisting we have a resultant atomic bonding force at this cross section and another atomic bonding force at the other cross section. If the joint is not uh, in dynamic motion, either it is stationary or moving with a constant speed along a linear path, then can write this equilibrium equation. Sum of the forces uh, is equal to zero. So from here, 2 f sub i since the gusset plates are symmetrically located well f sub i f sub i the resultant of atomic bonding forces at this cross section equal to uh, that of the other cross section at the other cross section so 2 f i uh, is equal to f load solve this equation and from here say that atomic bonding forces 
F sub i is equal to applied force by the sheet onto the rivet FL divided by 2. For one rivet, the atomic bonding forces okay, uh, must be equal to that much. Okay, and then at this cross section, write the shear stress. Well, if we divide the atomic bonding forces at the cross section, F sub i, okay, to the area of that cross section, then this means it is the shear stress. And this shear stress must be less than allowable shear stress, maximum equal to. Okay, area uh, for one rivet is equal to pi times square of the diameter of the rivet divided by 4. Okay. Well, uh, if the uh, set at the joint set of rivets have been located symmetrically, okay, say that F load applied force uh, where the existence of this sheet metal say that F1 okay the other force applied by the other sheet is F2 okay now well here saying F load uh, I mean the force exerted by the sheet metal onto one of the rivets well uh, we locate the rivet symmetrically about the resultant of the force which is applied by the uh, component onto the joint where we have n uh, rivets. Uh, so well can say that uh, FL it is the load uh, per rivet is equal to F1 or F2. If as a whole this joint is not accelerating or decelerating, either it is uh, stationary or moving along a linear path with a constant speed, then F1 is equal to F2. So not a matter you substituted F1 or F2. Divided by N. N is the number of rivets. So okay, well F sub I. F sub I is equal to FL divided by 2. Okay, so write the shear stress expression. Tau is equal to F sub i. F sub i, FL divided by 2. FL is F1 divided by N. F1 divided by N. N is the number of rivets times 2. Yes, 2 comes from here. Yes, uh, this is the uh, magnitude of the intermolecular force system at one of the cross section. Okay, and then divided by A, A is pi times d square 4, pi d square of the diameter of the rivet divided by 4 or write the 4 at the numerator. And the worst case equal to the allowable stress. Here is the design equation. Yeah. The only unknown in this equation is the number of rivets. And solve this equation. Allowable shear stress is a mechanical property. Okay, we know what it is. How much? Okay, F1 is the force uh, exerted by the first sheet okay or it is equal to the force applied by the second sheet we know how much pi is a constant number d well regarding the sheet metal thickness we selected obeying the recommendation the rivet diameter so well the only unknown is the number of rivets yes as engineers we determine the number of rivets using this equation 
okay but uh, there is another uh, issue to deal under the effect of those tension forces well rivet to its body tend to tear this sheet uh, over here and over there okay to be able to prevent shear cuttings tearing here and there well uh, solve another shear stress equation and determine the minimum distance to have between the uh, the age of the sheet metal or age of the gusset plate and the center of the hole it is another critical distance yes the following slide just to find the recommended uh, values for overlap joints for boot joints you know the good practice boot joints so well talk about this one well this side gusset plate this side we have another gusset plate and this is sheet one this is sheet two and on the top view yes uh, we have the necessary rewards one two three or n in general say and here this uh, slide or this figure is to find the recommended value for the distance to have between the edge of gusset plate and the center of the rivet distance e well if this limit distance minimum value of e is uh, not used uh, the distance between the edge and the uh, center of the rivet uh, becomes less than e then sure when the sheet is loaded okay the joint loaded by the sheets then the body of the uh, rivet will tear this sheet here and will tear there to be able to prevent tearing okay such yırtılması uh, yes obey to the recommended recommended value of e it is the distance from the edge of the gusset plate to the center of the rivet uh, is written over here 1.5 times rivet diameter obey to this recommendation okay e1 is the distance when it is doubled okay to have between this row and the uh, other row e1 is equal to 0 0.9 times e okay and then in this direction the minimum distance between the successive rivets it is denoted uh, symbolically with letter t okay t is equal to 2.8 times d plus 8 yes these are recommended values Ha, S is the sheet metal thickness. Okay. S1 is the thickness of the gusset plate. Thickness of gusset plate is recommended uh, as equal to 70% of the thickness of the sheet or 80%. 0 0.7 or 0 0.8 times the thickness of the sheet. Yes. Uh, shall you learn these numbers by heart? No. But... Be aware that need to obey to these recommendations, otherwise you may have undesirable tearings. Okay. This slide, the text is in Turkish. Why? Because this is the page directly copied from Turkish standards. Okay. Referring to this uh, slide. You can see the vocabulary in Turkish for the interested students. They uh, gonna find a job after graduation in Turkish market, Turkish industry, or plan to find a job. So, well, recommendation, you know, uh, extend the vocabulary, learning the uh, special Turkish 
uh, words, the technical words in Turkish. Okay? And uh, not only to see the uh, Turkish uh, vocabulary, uh, the vocabulary, uh, the, mm, the names of the rivets in Turkish, but also so to see the codes of the documents published by Turkish Association. TS means Turkish standards and the code of the document is 94 slash 3. Okay, go to library and find this document. It is about this type of rivets. You can find the tables to see the standard uh, size of this type of rivets. Okay, this type of rivet as it is written over here, Kazan Yapımı için Yuvarlak Başlı Perçin. Well, it is written that this type of rivet is commonly used in the structure of uh, boilers. Okay, heat exchangers and boilers. Yes. This slide is uh, just about the documents published by Turkish standards. Uh, these are all about the rivet materials. Shall you learn those numbers? Shall you translate the written text in English to English? No. This is just to say that have an idea that all the things are standard. Ah, well, this slide, yes, uh, I said uh, whenever rivets are used uh, for joining the components to each other, then in the assembly uh, drawing on the page, she, uh, sheet, assembly drawing sheet, at the parts list, then uh, along the notes column, the designation notes are to be uh, written. Okay? Uh, well, uh, technicians or the reader in general, looking at that technical note, can understand which kind of rivet has been used uh, at the joint. And so, well, uh, in the market, mentioning the specification note, it can be purchased. Well, the technical note for the rivets are in this format. We write the name of the machine element. Say that rivet in Turkish perchin. And then if the rivet is the one, it has been designed and constructed, manufactured in accordance with the uh, rule of uh, the association, write ISO and then write the code or TS in this example, Turkish standards. Uh, if you wonder one more time, say that Turkish standards, measure of the Turkish standards, the only difference, uh, say, uh, the language, the uh, content of the publications, uh, documents published by Turkish Association, just almost the same that of the ones published by ISO, International Organization. Uh, in ISO standard, in the document published by ISO, the text is in English. The uh, publication done by the uh, Turkish standards, the language is Turkish. The rest is the same. So, well, TS or ISO, of course, number, uh, publication number uh, published by ISO won't be the same. Whatever it is, say that this part is to find the code of the document published by Standardization Association. The rest, there are two numbers separated with a cross. It is to say, diameter of the rivet, length of the stem of the rivet. Yes, as it can be seen from this uh, figure, it shows the undeformed appearance of uh, projection for this type of rivet. 25 is the length of uh, the stem and diameter 7 is the diameter of the stem. And then after writing the size, nominal value for the rivet is it is stem diameter. Uh, finally, we write the uh, code. It corresponds to the uh, material of the rivet. Here, Fe means low carbon steel. Okay, 34 is the tensile limit. If this limit is exited, then rivet will be broken. Okay, unit of this number is traditional Turkish force unit, kilogram force. 1 kilogram force is almost 10 newtons divided by square millimeter. Millimeter square, not meter, millimeter squared. 
if 34 kg force per millimeter square is exited at the cross section then the uh, atomic bonding forces won't be sufficient and the rivet will uh, will be damaged will be broken okay well this slide uh, well the thing to highlight is it is sectional view yes rivet is a machine element it is name is in the famous list list of what list of the machine parts or elements for those special hatching rule is valid it says whenever a rivet is cut longitudinally it is sectional view is to be shown as if there were no cutting there were no sectioning it is sectional view is to be just uh, in the appearance of it is uh, outside outer appearance well see uh, this figure we have front view and top view of uh, the selected part of an assembly well uh, for the sectional front view the cutting plane now show the cutting plane line is this one yes the cutting plane is at the symmetric cross section of the rivet and the surface of the cutting plane is parallel to the longitudinal axis if the cutting plane is at the symmetric cross section and parallel to the axis we say that longitudinally cutting longitudinally cut rivet has been longitudinally cut and that's it is sectional view you see well take a deformed rivet and then observe it you see exactly such a thing although this part is solid not empty although head is made of solid material you see on the sectional view we have no hatching line because of the uh, agreement uh, special hatching rule but top view sectional top view yes this cutting plane has been used cutting plane line okay say that B B cutting plane line A A this is section AA front view section AA where we have the sectional view of the rivet as if there were no sectioning we have the image of the rivet uh, in it is outer appearance but section BB top view is section BB uh, for section BB the cutting plane BB is not longitudinal oriented perpendicularly cut the rivet okay the cutting plane is perpendicular uh, with respect to the axis of the rivet so if it is perpendicularly cut then general hatching rule is valid and on it is corresponding sectional you need to highlight the solid part of the rivet it has been cut of course imaginarily by the cutting plane yes the hatching lines are needed okay in other type of rivet the sectional front view is uh, in the appearance of it is outer side but the top view yes sectional and according to the general hatching rule we have what we had the necessary cross hatching lines yes don't forget sectional view of rivet we obey to the special hatching rule so well uh, this has been drafted obeying to the general hatching rule it is wrong this is true you see the sectional view of the rivet is uh, in it is outer appearance this is correct this is correct true uh, the top view yes cross hatching lines are needed this is the top view of the rivet uh, it is in accordance with the general hatching rule okay yes uh, one more valuable info not today but beforehand in hand drafting 30 years ago or more well think about it take your pencil and try to draw this part of the projection draw this circle arc using a compass 
Okay, first find it the center and then swing it. Draw this straight line, draw this, draw that, this, then that. To say that there is a rivet. Well, for the convenience of the students at the time, uh, well, we use pencil and paper. And also in industry, for the convenience of technicians, drafters, it was allowable. Instead of showing the projection of the rivet using in the order of 10 minutes by drawing, just show it as longitudinal axis. Okay, and then indicate the longitudinal axis with a leader line. And then write the technical note. It is about the uh, standard rivet. It was allowable. Yes. Skip the image of the rivet. Just write it as technical note using annotation technique. On the view where we have the longitudinal axis, write the technical note. Ha, if the head is not symmetric in shape. For instance, rivet is which one? For instance, one side head is uh, undeformed, go to market and purchase the rivet. The head is the available head. The, at the other end, hammering or pressing the freely extended portion. Okay, set it as uh, shape. Have one more head. If the head of the rivet, uh, available head of the rivet, is to be at the bottom side, or when it is inserted through the hole, the head, available head, is to be at the bottom side. Then, uh, showing the uh, axis of the rivet in this simplified projection, uh, well, at the bottom side, the leader line is to be at this side. If the head of the rivet, when it is inserted, is to be at the opposite side, then show the axis over there with a leader line and take, write the technical note over here. Ha, on the plan view, where the longitudinal axis is perpendicular to the picture plane, yes, a circle okay, corresponds to the head of the rivet. If the head of the rivet at the visible side, then use the continuous leader line. But if the head is, uh, the available head is at the hidden side, then uh, indicating the center of the rivet, use a dashed leader line. Be familiar, whenever you see such a node with uh, a leader line, then uh, sure that it is the simplified projection of uh, a riveted joint. Yes. And then here, uh, well, uh, in the archive of uh, the company, you may find uh, the projections. Well, first see the projections, something like that. All like this, or this one. You see, there is a circle, half of it black, the other half is white. What is that? It is a symbol, first of all. Uh, well, to say that there is a rivet over there. Yes, for the rivets, we have standard symbols. Here is the table. It is in accordance with German Association. DIN 407 is the code of the document. It is about rivet symbols. Whenever there are lots of rivets at the place, at the joint, and the space is very limited, can only show the location dimensions, the distance between the rivets, but there is no space to write the diameter of the rivet or to write the uh, technical note for the rivet. To say that bottom hat rivet, to say that contusing cat rivet, I mean the space is very limited to write such a technical note. Yes, if the space is sufficiently large, then writing technical note indicating the projection of the rivet with a leader line 
or the projection has been omitted say indicate the longitudinal axis and then write the technical note annotation technique but here in this photograph you see we have lots of rivets and then well which technical note is to be shown the drawing paper there is no available space in the necessary order uh, such a case use rivet symbols well uh, if you show the rivets symbolically then uh, there will be no need to write the diameter no need to write the type because for instance this is the symbol you see a circle partially half of it black the other half is white uh, is to mean that uh, the rivet is a round head type rivet the text is in Turkish it, it is because Turkish standards is the translated version of Germany standards okay you are like Bashlı Perçin round head type rivet okay uh, the type of the rivet corresponds this symbol corresponds to this type of rivet so no need to write the name of the rivet saying that uh, button head rivet and no need to write the diameter because this symbol is used if the rivet diameter is 16 millimeters okay shall you learn the symbols by heart no never but have an idea whenever on the assembly drawing you find such strange symbols then uh, be aware that these are to say rivets okay show the location dimensions only no need to show the diameter because that standard symbol corresponds to a certain specific rivet in shape and also in size uh, on the symbol there is such a uh, say tag like Greek letter gamma it is to say that well apply the riveting process not at the place where the components have been manufactured but at the site for instance it is a riveting issue at the site where we need to have this construction it is a bridge okay manufacture the beam manufacture gusset plate in the manufacturing company and then bring all of the components to the site and at the site apply the riveting process uh, if not one telly but we have two tellies then this means uh, not uh, only riveting process but also drilling process are to be applied at the site create the necessary holes for uh, riveting purpose at the site as well yes in that their symbolic representation is commonly used in uh, aerospace engineering okay for instance uh, as it is illustrated in this photograph aircraft and sheet metal one sheet metal two okay there are lots of rivets shall we show all of them one by one no well it is allowable well this is sheet metal 2 this is sheet metal 1 and this is the boundary between them along the boundary this sheet has been overlapped onto the other or say that we have a gusset plate here uh, okay uh, instead of showing the rivets to their uh, true projections just put crosses okay cross is at the center uh, of the rivet and then indicate one of them if the rivets are identical rivets of course okay show the location dimensions only 20 12 etc and indicate one of them with uh, a leader line and along the shoulder of the leader line putting such a cross have one two three four quadrants and then into the quadrants write the necessary notes the meaning of this meaning of that meaning of this well these are um, written 
in this table okay well if in the second quadrant the text is r17 what does it mean r17 that is the meaning it is to say that rivet r means rivet okay uh, item reference 17 shown on item list or table uh, this is to say that the id number of the rivet okay in this example this rivet is the 23rd rivet and in the assembly drawing on the assembly drawing at the parts list okay it is mentioned item number 23 and along the row uh, along the column notes column can see this specification note okay if the letter is n or f where in the first quadrant this quadrant along the annotation n means preformed head of the rivet on near side well arrow uh, indication arrow is over there if it is n this means the head when the rivet is purchased from the market it uh, it has a head uh, the other head is uh, created is shaped by hammering plastically deforming the free end you know this uh, and to say that the head is at the arrow side if the letter is F, then this means head is at the opposite side, far side. If there is a triangle at the third quadrant, one, two, three. Yes, here, triangle. What does it mean? This means 100 degree contour sink hat yes this is a countersink hat at the arrow side okay and the other symbols shall you learn those symbols by heart no but have an idea whenever you see such a strange annotation then this means it is to say rivet and open this table and then uh, see what it is okay now reach to the last slide of this presentation and then the rest cat application dear students continue well i open inventor okay and uh, there is an active project okay already define the project i don't want to demonstrate starting from the beginning how a project is defined project folder okay uh, it is done already defined the work as a project already created the project folder and in the uh, folder well i am going to have uh, two sheet metals okay create them one by one and two gusset plates part creation template clicked it is just to give an example how a riveted joint the model of riveted joint can be created i want to answer this question start from the sketching stage say my purpose is to create the uh, one of the sheet metals it is in this example going to be a rectangular prismatic sheet okay uh, say that it is width is equal to I don't know can say what how many say that 150 millimeters okay uh, the other direction the size is let's say um, okay mm, 80 millimeters finish the sketching stage and apply extrusion process sheet metal less than 10 millimeters is the thickness then say sheet metal if it is 10 or greater than 10 say we say slab it's a sheet metal and it is thickness is 4 okay yes 
It is made of mild steel. Assign the material. Steel mild. Right click. Assign. Okay. And then say this um, uh, file in the memory. Saying that sheet 1. Save as. Uh, surname, uh, obey to the recommendation, ID number, section number, okay, uh, S1 or S2, and then say that sheet 1, and date of the creation May 28, let's say, today. And then, well, to be able to finish my demo uh, using uh, the time, a reasonable time, instead of creating another sheet in a different size, assume that in this example the size of uh, the sheets are the same. So instead of uh, uh, creating one more slab starting from sketching stage in the same shape in the same size, yes, I've missed it. Why are saving this uh, file with a different name? Can have it as model. So save it one more time. Saying uh, sheet two. Okay. And then gusset plate. Yes, I'm going to connect these two sheets using boot joint, obeying to this recommendation not overlap but boot joint yes this one uh, determine the size of the gusset plate uh, in the example uh, I said that okay sheet metal thickness take a pointer pen S is equal to 4 in the example 4 millimeters okay diameter of the rivet recommended diameter you know how much 1.8 times s s is the thickness okay take a find the calculator Okay, say that 1.8 times um, 4. Yes, 7.2 millimeters. Well, for being safe to site, uh, round it to 7 or, well, uh, in the up direction, 7.5. Uh, but as I remember in the market, uh, the standard diameter for the, the type of rivet is not 7.5 but 8, as I remember. So, well, I'm going to take the size of the rivet 8 millimeters. Okay. So, well, the size of gusset plate, the width, um, well, how much? E1, E1, E plus E plus, 2E, E1, E1 plus uh, E1 in the parentheses. Okay. Calculate E, 1.5 times D. It makes, uh, D is 8 millimeters, millimeters, D is uh, well, 8 millimeters, obeying to the recommendation and making the rounding and knowing that it is available in this size in the market, I took it 8 millimeters. Okay, 8 times 1.5 is equal to E1, E is equal to uh, 12 millimeters. E1, uh, 12 times 0.9. Uh, it makes how much? Nine point eight. 
say that approximately 10 millimeters. Okay, then this means the width of gusset plate okay, is equal to this value is equal to uh, 2 times 12 plus 10 okay, 22 times 2 uh, it makes 44 yes 4 to 4 millimeters okay and the gusset plate is uh, from one side to the other side to extend well so well create the gusset plates well the uh, one direction the size of the sheet is 80 so the size of the gusset plate is 80 okay uh, new file it is to have the solid model of a gusset plate the gusset plate okay rectangle width of the rectangle 4 to 4 okay uh, the depth of the rectangular prism is 80 finish the sketching stage and apply extrusion process uh, the thickness of gusset plate yes S1 0.8 times S uh, ok calculated 0.8 times S S is 4 times 0.8 it makes 3.2 ok 3.2 is the thickness of gusset plate so extrusion length is 3.2 it is made of to prevent galvanic effect made of the same material mild steel whatever the material of the sheet is then the gusset plate is to be made of the same material okay save this file saying gusset 1 okay surname ID number section number gusset 1 okay May 28 save it one more time since the gusset plates are symmetric uh, in the same shape and size but it is a different gusset plate say gusset 2 okay and then well see how can have such a joint saying such a joint I mean something like one or this one okay Solving the stress equation, design equation, I determine how many rivets are needed. Okay, and also here the T value of T is important. 2.6 2.6 times diameter of the rivet 8 plus 15 well this means the distance between the successive rivets is to be 36 okay 36 and E is equal to uh, 1.5 times D 12 millimeters okay 12 millimeters okay then close the uh, part files 
if you're going to have the model of the assembly it is strongly recommended select the unit system and then assembly template create button and then well the components are not standard so uh, not place from content center but select place option and then well in the project uh, folder find the components well uh, sheet 1 sheet 2 this this and the others gusset 1 gusset 2 surname gusset 1 gusset 2 these are the components in this example to use okay locate them arbitrarily press escape button and then well uh, the, these are the sheets to connect to each other and these are the gusset plates okay then position them constraining facility okay well parallel positioning face to face first face to face for having boot joint say that this type and this solution indicate the surface and indicate the slender surface of the other these are to be in contact offset value 0 apply and the other constraint parallel positioning select the solution say that this slender surface of sheet 1 and the slender surface of sheet 2 are to be in the same plane apply and this surface of sheet and that surface of the other sheet are to be in the same plane apply yes you see I managed to position the uh, sheet metals uh, with respect to each other yes I'm going to select this visualization style to see the boundaries shaded with H uh, it is the boundary and then position the gusset plates say that face to face contact indicate the surface of this sheet or that of the other sheet not so important okay and indicate the surface of the gusset plate yes gusset plate is to be in contact with the sheet so apply this constraint and then say that uh, this surface of the sheet gusset plate and that surface of the sheet how many millimeters away well the width of the gusset plate actually I forgot the value so inspection 2 and then 44 ah yes 44 this means symmetrically located uh, 22 is the location dimension for this H okay assembly ribbon constrain dialog box and then say that parallel positioning the distance between this surface of the sheet and that surface of the gusset plate is not 0 but 22 yes apply and then this surface and that surface are to be uh, in the same plane apply yes one gusset place is okay at the correct place and then the other gusset plate at the opposite side face to face contact say that this surface and uh, the surface of the gusset plate are to be in contact okay apply and then say that this slender surface of this sheet and the surface of the gusset plate are to be in the same plane apply and then well similarly distance between this 
surface of the gusset plate and that surface of the sheet is equal to 22 millimeters not in this direction but opposite direction so right offset as negative yes and then say ok finish the mating stage yes boot joint and how about the <laughs> rivets ok well before answering this question well uh, actually uh, I forgot saving the file ok well after having the gusset plates uh, as positioned and the sheet metals as well save the file before the riveting stage save as ok write the name of the file surname ID number section number and then say that riveted joint riveted joint May 28 ok visualization style shaded with H's um, uh, the first coming rivet is to be 12 millimeters away from the edge, 12 millimeters away from the edge to be able to prevent uh, having uh, tearings. I am using the recommended values E. Okay, E to be uh, one and a half of D. It makes 12 and the distance between the successive rivets is to be 36 uh, I calculated but I forgot whether it is really 33 or 36 one more time calculate uh, 2.6 2.6 times the diameter of the rivet it is in our example 8 ok plus 10 31 millimeters uh, but say it is for boot uh, say um, overlap joint for the boot joint uh, it is equal to that much calculate it again that is the formula uh, 2.8 times diameter of the rivet plus 8 uh, 30.4 ok 30.4 so well here see uh, along the design ribbon cannot find a facility to create the riveted joint for bolt joint for pin joint uh, the facility available but for riveted joints there is no tool so well follow the way it is the only way uh, if there were uh, a design tool then I would say long way uh, well in the long way first create the uh, the holes necessary holes for riveting purpose within the gusset plate or within the sheet I'm going to create those within the sheet okay or no gusset plate it is I think uh, says since we know the E and T values especially E value is to be measured relative to the edge of the gusset plate well, create the holes uh, just uh, within the uh, gusset plate first. Uh, I'm going to take it in edit mode. Right click and select edit option. Without leaving the assembly in one. Yes, uh, taking an edit right uh, on one of the component. You can have the component as if it were in part environment. Okay, and then start the whole creation process. Well, the diameter of the hole for riveting purpose rivet diameter plus how much see the recommended value uh, rivet diameter is less than 10 so the whole diameter is to be 0 0.2 plus rivet diameter 0 0.5 
okay say that's 0 0.2 8.2 okay diameter of the drill is 8.2 it is truly extending okay so select the true all and then the rest hole is to start from here okay this surface and then well uh, value of e relative to here it is 12 yes relative to this h it is 12 okay I'm going to create one of the holes here or at the opposite edge and then for having the others use array copy technique okay after creating this hole then apply array process okay and then well uh, create the copy of the feature not the entire of the body so this option is correct indicate the feature because feature indication button is uh, on status if not clicked it on indicate the whole I said that this feature is uh, copied in which direction clicked on direction tab and indicate the age of the gusset plate and after that see the simulation if the simulated arrow is in the correct sense continue if not clicked on flip flop button well how many rewards uh, need to use for this connection purpose well solve the design equation and say that in our case four rewards are enough so write uh, four and then the offset distance 30.4 millimeters uh, well here well uh, if I say four rivets then one of the rivets will be in the atmosphere I say that three rivets are enough assume three rivets of course this is also important yes here 12 but there if couldn't find 12 then this means uh, the uh, sheet metal uh, is to be or had to be uh, deeper gusset plate correspondingly okay say that assume it is okay and then finish uh, finish this whole creation process uh, within gusset plate clicked on return button whenever you take a component into edit mode don't forget at the end to click on return button remember uh, in the midterm exam it was one of the exam questions I said that why the student receive error message when attempt to create view or when attempt to do another thing because the student uh, forgot to click on return button don't forget turn back to assembly in one and then well how about the other holes well take the sheet metal into edit mode right click edit and in edit mode take a sketch right on the surface not applying whole process but using uh, well uh, projection technique okay apply project geometry process indicate the age of this hole indicate the age of the other hole indicate the age of the other hole have their projections and then finish the sketching stage and apply extrusion process you know it is my technique show this show this show that regions okay in of course to cut the material in cutting mode truly cut the material okay say true all and then say okay yes achieve to have the holes necessary holes these are in alignment with the holes of the gusset plate click on return button and then similarly take the gusset plate in the order into edit mode and then over the surface of the gusset plate take a sketch right and uh, say apply project geometry process showing the age of the existing holes have their images finish the sketching stage and then apply extrusion process by showing this profile 
this profile this profile in cutting mode truly cut the material and then say ok and then don't forget to click on return button yes this is the drilling stage and then you see within all I have the necessary spaces these are in alignment uh, these are coaxial holes and then well do the same thing uh, well for the other sheet well at the other side this side have three holes but here in this cat application I'm going to demonstrate complete my demonstration only uh, having the rivets over there well the rest depends on your interest well using your computer you may continue on the rest of course first reach to that stage and then well have the holes over here okay you know uh, at the joint we have uh, well two rows yes this and that uh, I have uh, the necessary holes along one of the columns the other just uh, at home you may create in the same manner how about the rewards well answer this question as well and then finish this uh, class uh, record uh, rivet is a standard machine element so well can't find it as model uh, in the library content center and then well select fasteners book as a book on the shelf and then well bolt not pin washer no it is rivet open this folder and then a uh, plain rivet countersunk rivet plain rivet open this folder and then say that this is the type of the rivet I am going to use this type of rivet it is called this ISO 1051 I selected this type uh, well uh, if you invoke the model of a rivet you find the model of the rivet as plastic the deformed but if you purchase a rivet from the market you find the rivet as undeformed but in inventor it is going to be uh, ready to insert as uh, already deformed actually it is unrealistic first we insert and then hammering or pressing the free end we have the other hat but in inventor it is uh, going to be in its final form okay select this option and then say okay then it's as it is expected the following stage is size selection the parameter size of the parameters fixing stage nominal diameter 8 millimeters is the nominal diameter it is the undeformed diameter of the stem in our example it is 8 and then gripping length range gripping length means the total thickness thickness of gusset plate plus thickness of the sheet plus thickness of the other gusset plate thickness of the gusset plate actually I forgot ah 3.2 millimeters I remember okay then uh, have a calculator and then 3.2 is the thickness of 1 times 2 thickness of both plus 4 10.4 uh, 10.4 is uh, the gripping length and that value is in this range okay uh, greater than 001 less than 11 so select this range and then into this box write the gripping length it is 10.4 and then yes as custom no uh, after having the rivet as deformed no need to edit it so select as standard and then rivet 1 
and then after inserting it here then apply array copy process or well since I have three rivets then why not well I may repeat the insertion stage it is not so difficult but if there were lots of rivets then probably I would use array copy facility and then the rest you see rivets uh, just in the appearance of uh, as deformed uh, insertion type constraint uh, ok clicked on this option and then uh, alignment option this one I think is correct within the hole have the body indicate the age of this hole uh, while seeing the longitudinal axis in the simulation indicate the age of the stem okay how oh, well select this solution if you couldn't find the rivet uh, at the correct place okay click on apply similarly indicate the age of the rivet okay then rotate it indicate the age of the stem indicate the age of the hole and then say apply yes indicate the age of the hole indicate the age of the stem and then say apply finish you see along one row riveting is okay and of course well at the other side we need to have uh, three more rivets to connect the second sheet uh, to the gusset plates and via which indirectly to the other sheet but the rest is uh, just your home studying okay uh, before ending the uh, uh, the classwork uh, cat application part, then well save the file one more time, and then well check when we created the sectional view. Okay, going to have the image. Yes, uh, sectional view of the rivet to its outer appearance. You know whether inventor will apply the special hatching rule or general hatching rule I want to answer this question okay so for this joint create the sectional view view creation process I selected first quadrant obey to the rules of ISO ISO template and then clicked on create button start the view creation process Okay, scale one to one. Okay, say that this is the top view. Okay, since it's an assembly, you know, first style button is to be second style button is to be selected. Drawing the images of the assembly is uh, we show the um, images of visible. Uh, entities not the hidden ones you know it is a convention start the sectional view creation process indicate this view and then well I'm going to cut the joint uh, the second rivet at a symmetric cross section yes keeping this track following this track well say that cutting plane line is at the symmetric cross section of this rivet so while this cutting plane is to cut the rivet longitudinally and then create the sectional view yes you see inventor created the sectional view of the rivet uh, obeying to the special hatching rule you see although rivet is a solid object then you see on its sectional view there is no cross hatching line Inventor use a different hatching angle for the gusset plate than that of the sheet 
you know, uh, to highlight that it is the section view of an assembly, we use different inclination angles on the uh, section views of different components. Yes. Uh, of course, the axis of the rivet is to be shown. Annotation, longitudinal axis. Show this. Show that. Have the longitudinal axis. Okay, and then stretch the longitudinal axis furtherly using gripping technique. Okay, on the top view, show the horizontal vertical axis. Okay. And then parts list. Yes, see the parts list. Uh, well, first show the balloons. Okay, balloning stage. Huh? Assembly drawing. This is an assembly. So, well, uh, you know the format requirement auto balloon or manual balloning. I'm going to use, since there are few components, manual balloning. Indicate this one and then say okay. And then have the balloon. Right click continue, indicate the gusset plate, right click continue, indicate the other gusset plate, right click continue, oh well, made a wrong click, so indicate gusset plate, right click, continue, yes gusset plate, component 1, component 2, component 4, and this is what component 3. And the rivet component five. Okay. And of course, dimensions are to be shown. Uh, assume that I show the dimensions and then parts list. Clicked on this and then indicate the view, which view on the view uh, where you show the balloons, ID balloons, and then say okay. And then place the parts list. And then for item 5, you see the specification not written. How? ISO, this is the code of the standard and the name of the machine element rivet. And the first number is diameter, 22 is the, uh, the length of the stem. This technical note is uh, written by the software. Of course, parts list is to be edited. Well, there are some mistakes, you know. Uh, the title of the parts list uh, had to be at the bottom. Okay, well, this is not part number column, but uh, part name column. This is the technical note. Uh, the title of this column is written in the convention not description but notes okay already studied on the editing stage well you learn i educated you on the necessary things then well the rest is just your home studying edit the parts list and also well necessary to have drawing number column add the drawing number column okay and then well detail drawing for sheet one Detail drawing for sheet 2 and detail drawing for gusset plate. For this assembly need to have three detail views. Detail detail drawing, sorry. Detail drawing, engineering drawing for sheet 1, engineering drawing for sheet 2, engineering drawing for the identic gusset plate. Uh, shall we draw the projections of uh, detail drawing for the rivet? No, because it's a standard machine element. The technical note written along the notes column, this note is sufficient. Okay? Go to market and mention, uh, inform the shopkeeper that you want to purchase a rivet. It is in accordance with ISO 1011. It is nominal size 8 by 22. Diameter 8. Length, undeformed length is 22. Then shopkeeper will provide it. Okay, my dear students, ending the video record. Assume that I show the dimensions and I edited the parts list. So, well, with this CAT application, I think I have a right to say, uh, finish the chapter. It is about 
rewards. Stay healthy, my dear students. Bye-bye.